Good blessed evening, everybody. We are here doing a Bible study on 1 Corinthians chapter 2. So let's get into it. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. Remember back, in Mo back with Moses? When God said, I've chosen you, and Moses said, why not my brother Aaron? You know, I got a, I got a stuttering problem. I overthink stuff, blah, 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 blah. And God's like, no, I chose you. So no matter what type of uh, speech impediment you have or lack of wisdom, God is wisdom. And as you go deeper in him, he will give you wisdom. He will give you the knowledge. As a matter of fact, he's going to give you the thirst to go seek it. So don't worry about it. Verse 2, for I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. I didn't come to you all telling you that I know anything among you. The only thing I know is of Jesus Christ who was crucified. The word. Verse 3, and I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. Now this is the Lord right here. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit of power, that your faith should not stand in wisdom, in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the princes of this world, those are principalities, that come to naught. So they come to nothing. The rules of this world, spiritual wickedness. Remember, we don't we battle against not against flesh and blood, but of princes, which are principalities, um, spiritual wickedness and powers of the kingdom of darkness. And because they are of this world and not of God, they all come to naught. And what scripture was that? That you, verse five. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. Howbeit we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the princes of this world that come to naught. Verse 7. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So they wouldn't have killed Jesus had they known, had they turned to God versus the ruler of this world, which is, which you know is uh, the adversary, Lucifer, Satan, Beelzebub, whatever name you want to call him, the prince of darkness, whatever name you want to call him. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard neither have entered into the heart of man things which god hath prepared for him that love him we have yet to see we have yet to hear the glory that god has prepared for us to those that love him and that's so beautiful it really makes you think of heaven doesn't it You know, he gives overtly and abundantly and according to his riches and glory in heaven. And God gives a lot when he gives back. I know when he gives to me, he gives way more than I ever thought. Imagine how much more is in heaven. To those that love, imagine how much more is in heaven. But as it is written, okay, sorry, verse 10, I got distracted. But God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit search of all things, yeah, the things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of a man, which is in him. Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. Verse 12, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, it's the Holy Spirit, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. 
which things also we speak not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the nature, but the nat natural man, my apologies, receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. And I'm going to start right there at 14. Actually, no, we're going to read 15. But he that is spiritually, that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. So 14 and 15 uh, really stuck out to me when I asked God, I said, God, I want to get First Corinthians. So he had me read uh, chapter one yesterday. And I said, uh, I said, you know, God, I really enjoyed that reading. I want to get back. I want to come back into Corinthians. And uh, verse 14 and 15 stuck out to me. The natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit. Natural man. This this is a man of the world here. A man who is in the world and of the world cannot receive the things of the spirit. And this man, in this context, is mankind. So be it man or woman, neither one of you all, not the other alphabets, man or woman, if you are of the world, you will not be able to receive the things of the spirit. As a matter of fact, the scripture here calls them foolishness unto them. All right. It calls it foolishness unto him. It's foolishness because they cannot perceive it because they're too fleshy, they're too carnal minded. And the scripture goes on. Neither can he know them. Because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself judge no man. So when you're of God and you're with God, uh, trust me, it's a completely different level. And um, one thing I enjoy is, um, you know, when God does use, them, use me to deliver messages to others, you know, I don't have to come to people and say, oh, well, hey, this is what God says and all this stuff like that. It is not for them. Uh, a lot of times it's not for them to know. You know, of course, when I give to people, hey, God led me to give this to you. That is for their faith. And that's how God leads me to give that to them. But when it is a message for people, it's contingent on their faith. And I'm talking about me here. I, my relationship with God, like, you know, God lets me know it's contingent on their faith, whether they receive it or perceive it, whether they receive it or perceive it as such. I don't need to go to anybody and say, hey, this is a word from God or, you know, this is a prophecy for you right here. No, God has me give to them what I receive. And he literally has me sit back and watch it. Um, he and watch that seed sprout in these people. Because I can perceive um, because of the Holy Spirit, uh, things of the spirit and. I'm blessed to be able to see that grow in other people. And I'm pretty sure you guys have uh, received that as well. But there are often, there are sometimes I do meet people who don't perceive the spirit. And uh, when you're having a conversation with them, there is a um, spiritual wickedness about them that'll call it foolishness when you talk about things that are of the spirit, like uh, which is uh, Woolock's. Um, covenants uh demonic possessions and things like that that they will really laugh at you and you know at that point you know there's no need to retaliate against those people every time i start a video for who hath known the mind of the lord that he instruct him but we have the mind of christ so i'm in bible study here because every time i start this thing there's always somebody next door it feels like they got to come outside and make all this noise. So you guys have a blessed one. This was a short one. And take care.